I hear this wah, 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 and I'm like, what is that? She goes, oh, it's a baby tiger. I said, are you serious? I never seen one in my life. She goes, oh, come here, and she opens the door, and she takes the little tiger out and puts it in my hands, and I was just like, oh, my God. Really? This, and it, it just, that was it for me. And of course, I was naive in, in a way at that time, and you know, I just thought this was the most awesome thing in, in my life. Hey, Nora. This is Nora. She's like 10 years old. We got her in July. She came to us from the Sam Mazzola facility. Sam was breeding them. I never agreed with what he did. He did the picture thing with the cats. So they would put a chain around its neck and then they would also hook, run chains through rings up the box and then that would come through and then they would hook it somehow, like secure it where the cat couldn't move off the box, you know, and they would do the pictures. And I just hated that. And I said, you can't keep doing this like this. You can't keep just like with the photos. I said, you're not going to be able to do this anymore. You've got to come to terms to this is going to stop. And it didn't until his death. He passed away in July. He actually left them to us in his trust. Nikita was a white tiger. Nikita was the dominant in her cage. She was uh, tortured or disciplined with the water hose. Um, he was very, uh, he always said they, they didn't know their names and they don't know what you're talking about, but he w I always told them, you were wrong, you're wrong. They know and they remember everything that you do to them. And if you're mean to them, they remember that and they don't like you. Well, her name is Tasha, but I call her my Latasha. She's a, a joy. She's a wonderful cat. She lived in a garage for nine years. With this, this elderly man had her in that garage for nine years as a baby. Here I get this call. There's a cougar loose in Danville, Ohio. And I'm like, oh my god, don't tell me it's Tasha. And uh, the sheriff called me and he said, you know, we got this cougar. We're going to shoot her. And I'm like, oh, just please wait, don't do that. And I says, I'm, I'm on my way. And then they called me back and they said she walked back into the garage. But he didn't report her loose for like 24 hours. So she was loose for 24 hours and no one knew it. She didn't have anything in her life that was significant to her but that garage and then and it was horrible, horrible conditions. It smelled, there was junk all over the place. And it was like, oh, you go in there and I would be like this. And all those years she it was in that stench. And so she lived like that, I, you know? It's gonna be hard to get used to having empty enclosures here. And then we got Katie over here. She's gonna be leaving with Nora. Katie's lived here all her life. We raised her from a baby. Her parents are here, but we don't, we don't breed. We had an accident one time, and we couldn't get rid of her. We don't go in with those cats. We did at one point when they were younger. I've done a lot of things that I turned around and thought, oh my gosh, you gotta stop doing this. Because if something happens to us, what happens to them? Either the, if, if one of my cats kills me, that cat's going to be euthanized, you know. I don't want that to happen to them. So, you know, uh, we've, we've stopped doing that many, many years ago. You know, I do, we just don't.
it was a white tiger. It might have been Nora. I think it was. Um, and she got spooked. And I had, they had the chain, and I, I had my hands, like, tucked under the chain on her, on her collar as they were pulling it, and somebody had the chain as well, and she spooked. And she turned, and she bit my leg through my pants. She ripped my pants, bit my leg, but not nothing serious. But she would have bolted, if, and my, I remember my fingers getting smashed because I wouldn't let go because she would have ran. And I wouldn't let go, and that's how I got bit because she came down, and I was holding it here, and her mouth was here by my leg, and she grabbed my leg. And I'm like, oh, my God. And, and I'm like, would you guys come on? And, you know, everybody's fumbling. And I'm like, I got her. Can you help me? You know, I'm not going to let her go. And, you know, that was certain things have happened, but nothing fatal. I mean, I've learned a lot through all that. And I'm still here today. But I think I was more uh, cautious I'm not in there hugging on them and rolling around the ground and walking them on a chain. And I couldn't even think about walking those cats on a chain, you know. Those days are long gone. And now with the way things are, you can't do that with. I don't care how, if you bottle fed an animal or not. They still have the potential to turn on you, like just like that. You don't know when that's going to happen. You don't know when they're having a bad day. Yeah, we never thought we'd see that. Here we're building more and for more cats, and now we have empty cages. So. But it's all right. I know it's all good. To big cat owners, if you can't provide the cat with the proper caging and perimeter fencing and diet and daily care, then you have no business having one. And if you can't give the cat enrichment and, 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 and an animal is not relaxed in their environment, then you're doing something wrong. A, a, a cat in captivity, it's a difficult thing. They need a lot of things. The, the animals weren't asked to be born in captivity. And a lot of times, yes, they get into the wrong hands and people overdo it. And there wouldn't be uh, that thing getting out of hand if they would get a control on the breeding and the selling and there wouldn't be animals that would need rescue because of people that aren't responsible and don't know how to take care of them and they think oh we'll just let them go and y you know you can't do that you're you're risking other people's lives when you do that we did everything carefully as best as we could you know and yeah i've had some scary things happen to me and i thank god i lived through it <laughs> Hi. Oh no. Hi. How are you? You smell that? Hmm? Hmm? Yes, you're a good girl. Yes, you are. I pride myself in keeping the enclosures clean, and, and if I miss a day, I feel so guilty. You know, I, but. Um, I, I even had a major kidney surgery a couple of years back, and the minute I got home, I had two bags, one hanging from my kidney, one hanging from my leg strapped on, and I was out there in a, like a, not a nightgown, but like a dress, and I was out there taking care of my cats, and he's yelling at me, you just got out of the hospital, get in the house, and I said, well, it needs to be done, and I'm doing it. I brought them this far and kept them safe, so now they're going to go to their forever home. It's not easy for us. I, I know she needs room even though we can open this cage up to her and stuff. She's going to be the most difficult, I think, for me. I, that's what I wanted for them. And <coughs> um, when we uh, 
So when I started hearing about the laws and the possibility of the animals being euthanized, and I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to wait until they pass this legislation and we can't afford the fees and the insurance and, and everything. And I'm considered a private owner just like anybody else. They always have come first in our lives. So whether I'm jumping the gun or not making that decision, that I think I did the right thing. Because if I seen somebody come here to put the cats down, that would be devastating for us and for the cat. Because they deserve to live.